and it will be Shirin Ben Zayed Bourgeri who will join us. Uh, you know, uh, she's innovation director at Finextra, uh, at Finastra. Sorry for my pronunciation, <laughs> uh, uh, Finastra, and she will talk about how APIs are changing the fintech world. So, Shirin, are you able to to join us to share your screen and and, and audio and video with us? Uh, I've seen you in the backstage, you know, like it's like in real events, you know, if people come from the backstage to the main stage, it takes some time. Hello, Shirin, how are you? Hello, do you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you well, yes. Perfect. Yeah, we can see you, uh, That that's really perfect. So yeah, I invite you to share your screen with us and, and then we will hear from you about like what's happening in the FinTech world with the Finastra in Innovation Director point of view. Cool, thank you. Uh, do you see my screen? Yeah, we see your screen. Uh, we see you. Uh, I'll let you uh, quietly for sharing your content for 25 minutes. See you later. Perfect, thank you. Thanks a lot. Hello, everyone. Um, so today I'll be sharing with you um, the financial perspective and experience to um, open finance and how APIs are changing the fintech world. And um, I'll start with a um, Quick overview, actually looking at the bigger picture of the impact of APIs on the fintech world and how it all started um, actually with open banking. Um, you've probably been hearing a lot and you're all very, very much familiar with open banking, PSC2 and all the regulation and uh, change it has brought. Um, so banks in one hand opening certain services via secure API portals and allowing for fintechs to connect to those services and to provide innovative serv services and products to, uh, to their consumer clients. So that was a couple of years ago and um, what was really interesting as we observed the fintech space is that uh, is to see this evolving and uh, gaining in sophistication um, with banking as a service and embedded finance. Here I'm reusing um, uh, a very interesting representation that you can find in the 11FS recent Banking as a Service report where we have in one hand the fintech that operates as a brand that owns the customer relationship and um, the user and provides the user experience and that is providing um, services to the clients relying on a number of service providers could be one or multiple service providers here and these are things like um, uh, product management, um, risk, compliance, etc. And they would be also relying on another player who's the uh, license holder in most of the cases that's a traditional bank. So we've got actually in a more sophisticated collaboration schemas with uh, with banking as a service and what's really interesting to uh, to also notice here is that we've moved from um, a monolithic world where just one player a traditional bank with over a whole range of services into a space where we have multiple brands and fintechs offering more granular and modular services to um, to their clients and i'll just take you um, through some examples here with the next slide. So here uh, with the first top left chart, we can, we can see this move from monolith um, representation of a traditional bank into the granular services that FinTech can provide. And the benefit obviously that it provides for consumers to pick and choose whatever products they'd like to go with. Um, also, you can see some of the uh, banking as a service players that are operating as a service provider and the schema that we saw earlier and most interestingly, the um, big techs that are also entering in that space, either as brands owning the customer relationship or also in some cases as service providers as well. So a very interesting evolution of this open banking into um, a first dimension of evolution, gaining into in sophistication with banking as a service and embedded finance. Um, what's really interesting here, and you probably have noticed, is that most of this is actually happening in the consumer banking space. Consumer and some providers starting to look at the SME segment. But still, we don't see 
any of these yet in the corporate banking and capital market space. And that's where we have the second dimension um, here evolving into more uh, lines of businesses, into more verticals. And that's where open finance comes to play. So here again, we have banks, financial institutions opening certain services via secure API portals. Um, but this time, uh, services in the corporate banking space, trade finance, commercial lending, capital market, investment management, um, to allow for fintechs to access to those APIs. We see very few things happening there. This is just the beginning. Um, and that's where I will be sharing with you our experience as financials. We've been investing heavily in that space. Now, as we look at this quadrant, it's very interesting to, to look at this fourth uh, space, completely empty. That's definitely a space to watch. Probably lots of things happening there as we gain in sophistication in those segments of corporate banking and capital markets. Now, uh, looking at open finance with the Finastra transformation experience, FusionFabric.cloud is our platform there, um, open development, open APIs platform. Uh, but first, maybe quickly, a couple of words about Finastra for those who, who've never heard about it. Um, Finastra is basically a, a fintech, quite a large one. Uh, we're 10,000 people serving about 8,000 clients, all banks and financial institutions. So we only operate in the um, B2B space. It's about $2 billion revenue. We operate globally and we serve our clients in all of these segments. And here we have a bit more detailed view about it um, as we're talking about retail, corporate banking, that's everything, commercial lending, trade finance, cash management, payment, and treasury and capital markets, both the buy side and the sell side. So it's interesting uh, to, um, to take that into consideration as we look at the open finance approach and what we are doing in terms of open platform. Also, another way to look at this is to translate all of these um, services or solutions into the data that flows in the different in these different financial systems. So, um, and this uh, illustrates actually better the benefit to go um, with an open system uh, where we are opening the solutions via open platform, open APIs, etc. So you can see that 6% um, of global daily trade goes via our trade finance solutions. 8% of daily FX trading, the capital market space, also um, goes via um, uh, Finastra trading system. Or two-thirds of syndicated loans go by one of our uh, lending solutions. So that's really why it's, it's very interesting to open um, and get access to these aggregated data as they um, represent a significant amount of data from the industry. Now what we've done there is really open um, these different solutions across the different segments via FusionFabric.cloud, which is our open development platform, allowing for these APIs to be available for fintech startups and other innovators. So in one hand, we're actually providing them with access to the APIs with the developer portal, more a technical um, aspect to it. And on the other hand, we are helping them in their um, collaboration with banks, financial institutions, and in their go-to-market. So a combination of commercial and technical collaboration, bringing together in one hand fintechs and startups, and on the other hand, our clients using these different types of solutions here across all the verticals, including corporate banking and capital markets. And here you can actually see uh, the different types of um, capabilities or types of services. And what's interesting and what I would be more um, focusing on here is the different use cases. So um, starting with the APIs on the top left, a uh, very uh, easy example to start with is Monoto, which is actually a US-based fintech that we work with that is connecting with some of our retail banking APIs to provide a PFM and also um, a robo um, saving application, basically recommending or doing certain saving automatically for the consumers out of their, um, out of the analysis of their usual transactions on their bank accounts. So simply calling 
um, the retail banking APIs via FusionFabric.cloud to access that transaction data information and then to trigger certain um, bank transfer movements in order to do the saving. That was the first use case, quite easy. Second one is SPI, where um, we have a number of SPIs available on the platform, and here the, the use case is the other way around. So um, a bank using a financial payment platform calling a fraud detection service provided by a fintech via this SPI, um, and this fraud detection is provided by NetGuardian, a Swiss-based fintech. So, um, that's the second use case. Then we have everything um, events. For example, uh, letter of credit, this is in the, more in the corporate banking space where um, FinTechs would subscribe to all broadcasts from the corporate banking system in order to be notified whenever a new event happens for this letter of credit or if a new letter of credit is initiated. And then um, fourth use case, which is on the capital market side, here we are looking at data shares. So this is very similar to the API use case, um, a financial system in the capital market space, uh, giving access this time, instead of um, just giving access to just a simple service, we are giving access to a huge amount of data that is uh, required for this specific use case, which is machine learning, heavy calculation um, um, example from Vector Risk, which is an Australian uh, fintech doing regulatory uh, reporting for uh, for the capital market space. So four use cases for different uh, types of services and also four different lines of business, retail, payment, corporate banking and capital markets. So examples of innovations from all these spaces. Um, at Finastra, we've, uh, we've started working on this journey about a year and a half ago. We're continuing to invest on it. I'll share with you a little bit our transformation journey and what we've learned from it. Um, but what's really interesting is to see um, really um, how this started. Initially, we've started with a couple of APIs and the retail. Uh, in the retail and payment space. And what we see today as we continue investing in this platform and opening more systems and more APIs is that um, we've reached almost the same number or even a, a little bit more APIs on the corporate banking side, treasury and capital markets, sell side and buy side with investment management. And we are continuing to invest on that because we see really lots of interesting innovations that would be coming on the corporate banking and the capital market space. And here you can just see like the two the two sides of the platform. So in one hand, um, the apps mostly provided by fintechs. Here you can see the RoboSafe app by Monoto, and uh, some of the banks that are using those applications today in production. Now, how did how did we get there? <laughs> that was a that was a quite long journey. Um, uh, a couple of decades ago we started providing um, some best of breed products at Finastra, like Condor on the FX trading or Loan IQ on the syndicated lending. But what was, what's interesting is actually is to look at that even before these products were launched in the market, there were some changes in the industry. So before that, the way financial institutions would approach the build versus buy, it was all built. They were all um, owning their infrastructure and software, building it um, custom built in house specifically for their custom use cases. And then there was a big change that happened, and they started buying best of breed solutions. Um, so that was the beginning of the journey for us, selling some of these best of breed solutions. And then the first transformation was by um, moving from selling products into selling solutions. So, for example, instead of selling loan IQ as a syndicated loaning solutions, we would go with a connected corporate banking. So, APIs starting already at the time with point to point connection and integration between different products in order to be able to sell that solution as integrated set of products. And then there was the second big change moving from buy to collaborate. 
And that's where we've started investing in Fusion Fabric Book Cloud as a platform for open development. And that's um, when we started actually opening the different Finastra um, systems via APIs and started collaborating with fintechs. Um, now, what we've learned out of that journey, um, first point is platforms are definitely growth accelerators and not only growth accelerators, but change accelerators actually. And we saw it even on the, on the culture side. So when we've started that journey of opening our systems via APIs, lots of people, product people uh, within the company were very much reluctant to opening their systems or collaborating with fintechs that could possibly be also competitors. So there was a big um, shift in culture as today, most people are embracing that platform strategy and, um, and see the benefit it has for and it brings for their product and for their customers. So a big transformation enabled by platforms. The second point is at the benefits of open finance specifically for the corporate banking and the capital market space. Actually, um, I really want to, uh, to emphasize that point. When we look at the corporate banking and capital market space, what we see is that uh, we have much less innovations and fintechs operating in that space. And we also see that, um, and I don't have any official statistics about that, but we really observe that the fintech founders in these two segments are usually much older, much more experienced. They all come from the um, from the industry, so they have um, decades of experience in the industry before going and launching their fintech. And that basically shows that these segments are still quite close, not accessible for externals, for outsiders to join and push innovative ideas there. And that's where open finance can really play a key role first by opening APIs, services, data to anyone, and then by, um, by doing so, opening and um, sharing the knowledge with a wider group of people. So open finance will definitely be playing a key role in transforming corporate banking and capital markets in the next couple of years. And um, third point is open. Open is definitely the way forward today in fintech and um, whether it is at Finastra where we heavily continue to invest in that, um, we see it really um, happening in the market. Open is, is the way forward for, for financial services. Uh, now, as I've shared with you this experience, I'd like to share one last example of how, of the power of open and how it is helping us transform um, and make maybe certain um, segments of the financial services more accessible to, to anyone to join and innovate. Um, and this is uh, done by hackathons. We, um, we do really, and we run lots of hackathons at Finastra. Our last one was back in December, more than 1,000 people from 38 countries, and that was before COVID. You can see people gathering around. What was even more interesting, actually, with this hackathon experience is the stories that we get out of it, stories of outsiders not knowing the industry before that have joined, they have access to the platform, to the APIs, and they're able to learn about these APIs and to learn about the industry and its challenges and to win hackathons against um, established players or professionals, experienced professionals in the, in the industry. And, um, and we continue actually with those hackathons. We've just launched our next one that is open till um, 22nd of November. Here again, we're going global, uh, focusing on FinTech, uh, pushing some of the most pressing uh, challenges that we see today in the world, like hacking systemic inequalities, COVID challenges, and uh, embracing technology-enabled change. Our objective, again, is to make um, the financial services industry challenges, data, APIs, and services available to anyone to be able to join and, um, and innovate and to push their fresh new ideas as we saw it in previous hackathons. And this year, we're partnering with a number of uh, players and um, 
number of banks and technology players. And just to give you an example, one of the banks we're working with are pushing um, a trade finance challenge. So they will be explaining to all the hackers what the challenge they are facing there specifically. And they will be sharing specific data and documents for the hackers to work on. And that's, that's just one illustration of how we take uh, certain segments of the financial services space that are quite close, not accessible, open them to anyone, student, developers, all types of participants really to go and explore those challenges and push their fresh new ideas. So looking forward to a more open financial services space and um, platforms and APIs are definitely playing a key role, a key enabler role there. Hi, Shireen. Thank you very much for, uh, for this talk. Can you unshare your screen so we have our, uh, we see our both faces during the questions? And actually, we have uh, uh, two questions uh, uh, so far. Uh, one is, is, is more uh, is directly on the platform. How do you follow up the regulation through corporate banking and capital markets? For example, uh, uh, my field, like Marketing Financial Instrument Directive. Uh, sorry, I was just struggling with the answer. Can you please no repeat the question? <laughs> It's Nick who asked you, how do you follow up with the regulation through corporate banking and capital markets? For example, how do you follow uh, my feed, you know, the uh, marketing yeah. financial instrument directive? So that's interesting. The way we work, whether it is on regulatory uh, requirements on other or other types of um, requirements that we need to, to work on is probably the same as uh, banks would do. So the question of build versus buy and collaborate, um, we definitely have our in-house solutions for some of these regulatory requirements. And we also, as we open our investment management solutions or capital market solutions, we also collaborate with FinTech players that provide um, regulatory solutions for these, um, for these challenges. Okay, thank you. There is a question from Martin. Uh, how much is a challenge or is in an inhibitor maybe uh, to your vision because of the, the considerable age of age and mix of technologies in the underlying financial applications? You know, you, you seem to have quite newer technologies. You also manage a lot of uh, old style legacy uh, technologies for your customers, right? Uh, and for example, he says some names from the old branding of Finastra, like Condor, Summit, Opix, Trade Innovation, Loan IQ, right, that you rebranded, but how do you manage this whole stack, you know? So um, it's a very good question, actually. Um, the thing is, we, um, we, we do a mix of, of two things. In one hand, we continue heavily investing in some of these solutions. I can speak about Condor, I know it really well. Uh, we continue investing in adding um, new functionality, new things into it, and also moving some parts of it into a new architecture, for example, new user interface, new stack there, etc. And on the other hand, we're also opening um, systems like Condor, LoneQ, Summit, and others via APIs for people to be able to um, to connect with and to um, so Vector Risk is one example. Vector Risk is a is an Australian-based fintech. They provide regulatory requirements, FRTB type of um, type of reporting and um, uh, they do that on a, uh, a very modern technical stack and via APIs, via actually the data share capability of, of Fusion Fabric Cloud, we can connect these with systems like Condor and Summit and be able to offer these services from innovative fintechs as well. So it's a mix. We continue investing in the core, but we also really believe in, in open and what other what collaborations with other players can bring. And that's uh, what's interesting, really. I mean, it's it's financial experience, but what's interesting there is how similar it is to what our customers are facing today. So they have financial systems and other solutions as well. Some of them in-house, quite old, and platforms and APIs are allowing them to move really to to the new world and to to connect with uh, a whole set of new applications. Yeah, thank you very much, Shireen. Uh, we're out of time for, uh, but I think, uh, yeah, uh, that was a really good question and also a great presentation to see actually how things are uh, going from the third party software, uh, you know, uh, enablers as, as Finastra, how they can help, you know, uh, the shift as we call it from open banking to embedded finance. So thank you very much, Shireen.